Okay, at first, I would like to share one of the Wasan poems written by Shinran Shonin. So, um, this is on Collected Works of Shinran, page 325. So, please join me in Gashio. Please put your palms together. The liberating wheel of light is without bound. Each person it touches, it is taught, is freed from attachments to being and non-being. So take refuge in Amida, the enlightenment of non-discrimination. Namo Amida Buts. Namo Amida Buts. Namo Amida Buts. Nam Man Buts. Nam. Good morning, everyone. And welcome to today's service. And I'm really glad to be back uh, to Portland after being absent from uh, two Sunday services. Um, but it was nice to meet people of Northwest District at Northwest Convention in Spokane. And it was nice to see familiar faces in Sacramento for BCA Ministers Association and National Council meeting. And <clears throat> at the BCA Con uh, National Council meeting, Koichi Mizushima, uh, minister's assistant of Sacramento Betsin, he shared with us one of the story of our bishop, Umezu. Bishop Umezu was looking at the word Sacramento, Sacramento, okay? And he was looking at the word Sacramento seriously with deep, profound thought, or well, Koichi thought so. So he waited for the bishop's word. And finally, Bishop Umezu said, oh, there's ramen in Sacramento. <laughs> Did you get it? He doesn't mean there's ramen restaurant in Sacramento, but there's ramen in the word Sacramento. <laughs> So our bishop is that kind of person who likes to tell a jokes all the time. At, at, at the hospitality room, one of the temple presidents told us ministers, he really enjoys talking with ministers because we are down to earth and we are not different from lay people. And I think this is where I appreciate Joro Shinshu teachings too. We are all on the same ground and the title doesn't make any differences. But sometimes we see people who start to behave, behave arrogantly after they obtain some kind of titles and self, selfishly tell people what to do as if he or she stands on top of the people. But in Buddhism, this is called erroneous view or wrong view. Shakyamuni Buddha described in one of the sutras called Sutta Nipata as one is not sage by the birth, one is not fool by the birth, one is sage by their own action, one is fool by their own action. So in ancient India, they believed that one's life is distant by the birth, by the cost they were born into. And there were no chances of lower caste to be upper caste. But Shakyamuni Buddha denied this caste system and said, important thing is the action we are going to make. So this is same thing for us. The title reverend doesn't make the person reverend. The title president or CEO doesn't make the person president or CEO. But the action, what we do is important thing. So those who attach to the title and behave arrogantly goes against Buddha's teaching. And that kind of viewpoint is called erroneous view or wrong view. Okay? And this erroneous view is described well in one of the commentaries called Chen Wei Shi Lun, a dem demonstration on consciousness only. And it said, what are bad or erroneous views? They have as their essential, 
sorry, they have as their essential nature defiled discernment that is false or topsy-turvy speculations and judgments. Okay, I, 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 I will repeat it one more time. I hope my pronunciation is okay. What are bad or erroneous views? They have as their essential nature defiled discernment that is false or topsy-turvy speculations and judgments. This word is really difficult to pronounce, topsy-turvy. <laughs> it means upside down, right? Top, topsy-turvy. <laughs> but it's okay. So simply saying, <laughs> erroneous view is to see things upside down, okay? To see things with our desires and subjective viewpoint. And this erroneous view consists of five erroneous views. And I still need to go back to the text to see what the five was. So I am sure that it is difficult to remember in one time. But good thing, Ken's recording my message and putting, putting on YouTube, so if you missed it, or if you are taking a nap right now, <laughs> please watch it on YouTube again. So, okay, this is five erroneous views. One, the view that there is perduring self or soul that exists in reality. Okay, number two, extreme views with impermanence or annihilation. Number three, false views, the denial of or disbelief in the efficacy of karma, rebirth, and causality. Number four, the rigid attachments to views, this mistakenly and stubbornly clinging to one's own speculative views as being superior, superior to all others. And number five, the rigid attachment to the soteriological efficacy of rites and rituals. So these five are uh, uh, erroneous views uh, taught in Buddhism. And I believe that in this modern society, what we really need to consider is number two, extreme views. And number four, the rigid attachments to views. You know, there are people of extreme views and they have rigid attachments to their own viewpoints. And they insist that they are viewed as being superior to all others. So that there are always conflict in this world. And the extreme views and the rigid attachments to views are like driving a car with high revolutions per minute, like 8,000 or 9,000 RPM all the time, okay? If the car runs with high revolution per minute all the time, what happens? Burns out. The engine breaks, breaks down, right? When the engine breaks down while driving, what happens? They stop, yeah, maybe crash. That means the car will stop in the middle of the streets, right? What happens if the car stops in the middle of the street? Other cars crash into the car. Yeah, right? So it'll be cause of problem. It'll be the cause of traffic and cause trouble for the others. The extreme views and the rigid attachments to views narrows our views and often loses equanimity. Because it loses equanimity, it often heats up and then begin to yell at people and sometimes uses physical force to control the others. So it is just same as the cars running with high RPM. Extreme views and the rigid attachments to views eventually causes trouble for the others. So Buddhism teaches us that importance of having equanimity to cool down and rethink our action. In fact, equanimity is counted as one of the wholesome mind 
and it is described as the state of mind which is detached from like and dislike. Detached from like and dislike. So I could say that the equanimity is a mind of non-discrimination. Mind of non-discrimination. So this exp explanation makes me think that do I really have equanimity? I often judge it things with my selfish distinction of like and dislike. And if someone blame or criticize something I like, it is easy to lose equanimity and heat up. You know, if someone criticizes your favorite sport team, or musicians, or family members, you don't feel good, do you? If you are able to say, well, there are various opinions, so it's okay, without feeling any discomfort or stress, then I think you can go home today. Yeah, thank you for coming today. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we know that equanimity is important, but it is really easy to lose because we are often relying on our self-centered mind or self-centered ideas. Right? So that is why Nembutsu is really important for us. Okay? Nembutsu, Nembutsu Nen means to contemplate or be mindful or to think. And Butsu means Buddha. So Nembutsu literally means to contemplate on Buddha or be mindful of Buddha. And we are being mindful of Buddha's working by reciting Namo Amida Butsu. And I think I talked about this before, but Namo is a transliteration of Sanskrit word Namas, which has a meaning to welcome. And Amida Butsu means Amida Buddha. And Amida Buddha is the Buddha manifestation of infinite wisdom and compassion. So we are accepting the working of wisdom of Amida Buddha to awake us to the truth with the heart of welcoming. So when we are losing equanimity, the working of infinite wisdom reaches us and make us realize we are losing equanimity. But at the same time, we are accepting the working of infinite compassion of the Buddha to never abandon us because of our nature of being self-centered. So that is why Nembutsu, the recitation of Namo Amida Butsu, is simply saying, simply saying, thank you, Buddha. Thank you, Buddha. You know, there are so many hate crimes, discrimination, and bullying in this modern society. We just had a shooting in the Minnesota uh, the other day, too. And this occurs because of the erroneous views, such as extreme views and uh, rigid attachments to the views. And these views occur by lacking or losing equanimity. So this is my sincere wish that the people around the world encounter the infinite wisdom and compassion of Buddha and awaken to our self-centered nature and begin to <coughs> nurture the mind of caring and sympathy to the others. So thank you all for coming today. And in closing, please join me in Gashio. Please put your palms together. The liberating wheel of light is without bound. Each person it touches, it is taught, is freed from attachments to being and non-being. So take refuge in Amida, the enlightenment of non-discrimination. Namo Amida Buts. Namo Amida Buts. Namo Amida Buts. Nam Man Da Buts. Nam Man.